So when you when you go to Google, uh, yes, you enter stuff like um, I like to use um, Mozilla, Mozilla, HTML uh, reference. Yeah, Mozilla HTML reference. You click on that. It shows you this Mozilla reference that you can see up here. Mozilla Elements reference. So when you click on it, it shows you all the documentation about HTML elements. We looked at several elements. Those are just maybe 10 to 20 elements out of the hundreds, if not thousands of elements that are available. You can see I'm still scrolling. You can see I'm still scrolling because there are several of them, so many elements. Some that I've never even had to do anything with. Despite how long I've been using the HTML, I've never had any reason to use them. So there are so many of them. Now, there is a particular group of elements that I, I just want to show before we enter into CSS. And that group is, yes, content sectioning. You can see this part. Please, when you, when you are, after the class, you should go back to this particular page and go through these elements. Just briefly, just, just um, skim through them so that you familiarize yourself with a little. Like, what I do is, I skim through elements, so I just know there may be an element that is better for me to use in my projects than maybe the one that I'm about to use, something like that you get. So, those are the things you know. Now, inside this um, content section, we, or we call it um, HTML semantics. Now, semantics because we discussed about span and div. Uh, I mean, span and div, or div and span earlier in our lesson and we said they, they, they had no um, particular function that they performed for us. They just containers. So because they're just containers, we now said the, the, the people who created HTML now decided to um, create some other containers which will which will have meaning. Not that they have any particular function, they will just have meaning. For instance, now if I'm in a website and I want to put an address it is better for me to use the address tag than to just use a div. If I'm creating articles in my blog, it will be better for me to use the article instead of just using a div. If I'm going to have a sidebar in my blog, it will be better for me to use the sidebar, or I mean the aside, instead of you know just using a div. The footer in my page. Now, I, I'm gonna show you, uh, I'm just gonna open a basic, um, let me open, which website do I okay, let, let me open like um, um, Facebook. This is Facebook. Yeah. So, uh, though this particular this particular page doesn't have any header, but as you can see, there, there, there there's something in the body. This is like a section. If you look very well, this is like this. This part I'm circling my mouse over. It's like a section. And this part too is another section. Then down here is the footer. So instead of just having to use generic naming inside here, we now, the, we now have HTML semantics where we can properly identify or name items on our website so that once people see them, they automatically or can guess that this particular place is for the footer, this place is for the header, this place is for the main, the nav, and section. So that being said, I'm just going to create a, a simple a simple um, web page here. I'm going to call my broiler plate as usual. Then I just call it HTML semantics. Now, in this semantics, if I'm going to arrange my website, the first thing I want to have in my website will obviously be my header. So the header can contain some maybe vital informations or navigations um, um, that you find on my website. So maybe I can just have my header and I'll have maybe the nav element inside for navigation. So inside these navigations, I'll just say, uh, I'll put two, uh, I'll put two anchor tags I put um, two anchor tags, and inside them I'll just maybe link to 
maybe let me call this one about let me just call this one about uh, about dot html then i'll give it about us as the then the second one i'll just do maybe link to contact the html then in the text i'm just going to say contact us Oops. contact us so as you can see uh, i have just created my navigation there may be inside the same head i can now put my h1 which will now contain the main content of my website so maybe let me just say my oops my first oops my my first um blog something like that so i i've just given it my header so after the header the next thing you should have in your website should be the main content so we call that um main so in the main content that's where the major stuff that's supposed to be in our website to be found so i'll just put a maybe let me say h2 here and say the main content now after in this semantics then we can you know after the main we can have the aside then I'll just say this is my um, sidebar. Then after the aside, I can now have uh, the last part of my um, website, which will be my footer, where I can have things like the uh, copyrights, right? So I can have things like the copyrights um, and say copy copyrights. Full stop, then say call rights reserved. That's how we have just created um, a website, a full blown website, just that with few content. So, to see that, I'll just open this in my browser and you see how it looks. So, this, the, despite how these stuffs look, they have been created. Let me separate these two links so that we can see them properly okay yeah now this site is looking like this but it has all the basic stuff that you need in the website all that's just remaining just for us to use css to style it to make it to look beautiful which is where we're going to go into today so we use css to style them and you see how you can you know make your sites move from sites like this to site like this or site like this that's how the sites are going to be looking like when we start uh, putting some CSS. So, but for now, this is just the structural arrangement of how our site is going to be. So, I think I'll just talk about the assi assignments that we're going to be do that uh, you're going to submit to me. Um, I'll communicate method by which you submit this assignment to me. So, I'll just open. I'll just open. Just open the, okay yeah i i believe you can see my screen now hello Emmanuel. Hello. yeah yeah you can see my screen right okay yeah so this is the yeah um html project that you are going to submit to me by our next class um so it's a simple it's a simple website that I've just created so it's a it's just a website about me so you're going to be doing a website about yourself um okay. the way we're going to do this is this is all i'm going to just show you but i'm going to show you that number one my website has everything we have used we have created links you can see at the top here i have links we've created the um, h1 tags i have h1 tags here we've um, added picture to our websites so far uh, and all this stuff so you can see there are links some of them are absolute links like this one if you look here it's an absolute link it's taking you to the code square website this is also an absolute link taking you to my github page and so on and so forth and i have my and uh, I used entity here. So everything we've practically done about HTML is covered in this book. 
sorry, in this um, small website I've designed. So that is what I want you to submit to me. As you can see, you can link to other pages on our website. So this is the About Us page. This is the About Us page, as you can see. It's about us page and you can go from there to my contact page and you can come back to the about page or go back to the home page so this is what i want to see in your own web page i'm going to share i'm going to send the the right top i think i have it here please this assignment is very important it will help me to understand how far we have gone and remember I said we if you uh, do you stay in Abuja, you are familiar with uh, this program back at the family where they say things like otokunadu is something that we will talk and we do. So take this uh, particular tiny project very seriously because this is just how it looks now. By the time we begin to add some CSS, it's gonna go from what it's looking like to something very beautiful. So if we're not able to create this structure with the HTML, then we cannot even start talking about CSS. So please create this structure. It's very simple. I've used the, you can use the same semantics that I've just shown you. This for the header, maybe this for the, these two inside the header, this will be the main page and so on and so forth. So let me see how well we're able to put together all that we've been learning in creating this particular um, tiny project. So I'm going to send a screenshot of how this, where my own project now currently looks like. Then from there, you can create something similar. Um, so we are going to, we're going to now move into uh, CSS. So I'm going to open my CSS cheat sheet. So we're going to be looking at um, CSS. And before we even, before we even go there, let's, still go back to um, Google and just type the word CSS. So just in the right corner here, you can see what CSS is here now. So CSS style sheets is a style sheet language used for describing the presentation of a document written in a markup language such as HTML. CSS is a cornerstone technology for the World Wide Web alongside HTML and JavaScript. So CSS, we only use it to, you know, describe the presentation of a document. We can use it to, you know, give style. That, that when they talk about description, they're talking about giving style to the document, which is usually a markup. Like we have seen that HTML stands for a um, markup language, a uh, hypertext markup language. So it is used to style markup languages so that's what the css does now we have the cheat sheets let us let me let me bring our focus to the topmost part of this um, cheat sheet here because that's that's the basics of everything now to write a style you know to your website you want to style your website there are two there, are, there there's a syntax for writing css now, a syntax is just a pattern that is accepted by a particular language to communicate to that um, particular, uh, to communicate, co communicating in that language has a pattern that you must follow. And for the CSS, it is this pattern that you can see here. I don't know if I have a pen to here, but at least you can see this um, pattern here. So the pattern is, you first pick a selector so what is the selector? If you look here, you say selectors, the elements on which the style should be applied. So when we were on HTML, we looked at elements, 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 elements. So a selector is an element on which a style should be applied. So we're going to be using selectors and we'll see how it goes. Then inside curly braces, we call this particular kind of bracket curly braces. So inside curly braces, we are going to put a property. Now, a property, it is the actual style to be applied. And the property can be things like the color. For instance, the color of this text, you can see I have um, 
very nice looking colors here for my text. So, and what we saw on our web page when we when I created this, you see that we just have only one color all around. So, but we want to style. If we want to style uh, the color of those texts, we put the color as a property. Then the next thing is to add the value. The value signifies um, things like uh, if it is also color, value for color will be things like red, blue, black, or any other color you can think of. Those are the colors. So it is very important to understand the syntax that you must first have a selector, then inside the curly braces, you put the property of the elements, the actual style to be applied to the elements, then the value. Now, you may now be wondering, so yes, we have seen the syntax for writing this CSS. Where do we now write it? There are three places where you can write the HTML, the CSS, uh, CM, your CSS style. One is the, the first one is the most simplest one, but not the ideal. It can be written in line. So writing styles in line is like using uh, an elements attribute called that is using the elements attribute called style to you know add some CSS to your project. So it is a very rarely used case, this on special location that maybe there's something you need to override or something that that's when you people usually use the inline styling because it's not usually the ideal. The other one is the um, internal styling. This is usually added to the head section. If you can look at this picture, the picture here, you see that this is the head section. Then you just add your style directly into your head section with your AC, your selectors, the property and value. Now, this is a, a good practice, uh, but it has limitations in that it is inside only one HTML file. That means if you have a site that um, should all look alike, that means you can use this um, internal styling on all the pages. That means you have to be writing CSS, CSS, CSS on every page, which will not be ideal. Then, the final and the most ideal style is the external link. So it is when you write your CSS in a separate file and link it in the head section using the link tag or the link elements to add that style to your project. So we are gonna go into our project and I'm just gonna create, uh, I'm just gonna create a, a new folder or I'm going to continue inside this folder. But what I'll do is that the names of the file will start with uh, CSS. So I'm just going to start with uh, CSS, CSS minus, um, let's say, basics.html. <laughs> yes, .html. Now, because we want to just see how we can apply these styles to, so we'll just say, basic CSS formatting. That's what we have. Now, with this, we want to first of all, look at how to add CSS using the inline format. So I'm going to put a H1 and say inline CSS format. Then here now, we're going to just create an element, say, we want to have a paragraph tag with some text inside, say this paragraph, this paragraph has inline styling, right? So that's what this paragraph has. Now we are going to save this. Uh, open in the browser. So when I save this and open in the browser, you can see our style here. But uh, let's say I don't like the color of this um, paragraph. I just want to change the color. Now, I can do that with any form of styling. But one of the easiest ways to do that is the use of the attribute style 
in our elements. So if we call the style attributes, then within it, we will now create the elements that we want to style. So I'll say color followed by um, a colon, then the color I want to put, let's say the color should be brown, right? Then I'm going to end it off with the semicolon, as you can see here. So this part that I've highlighted. So the color, say the colon and the semicolon to show that it is the end of that particular line. Now, when I save this and open in my browser, you can see that we have this brown niche looking color here. So let me open this side by side. So we can can see our work as we save them. Just immediately we save them. So now we have just successfully written our first CSS code. How easy was that? So we know that. Um, this is for the inline styling. So supposing I want to have several P tags, like so, I'll create another P tag. And let me just use the lorem five. This is just a bunch of dummy text. And I can just duplicate this tag severally. And when I save, you see my browser, they're all looking blackish. Now, for me to add the style brown or brown color to all my paragraph tags, that means I have to Either copy this, control C, and begin to paste it individually, 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 right? Individually into the paragraph tag. Yes. So as you can see here, they have all changed. But this does not make sense. What if I have over a thousand paragraph tags in my project? Is this how I'll continue to, you know? chase each of them and change the styling. So that brings us to the inline styling. So let me control, control Z, all this copy, right? And I'll save it again. So we said that to add the inline style, we go to the head section and use the style um, elements to add the style to the head of our project. So I've just created a style element, as you can see here. Remember, any element you open, you must close. So I've, I have the opening tag here and the closing tag. Then in between it, I'm going to write my CSS. Now, if you remember from our cheat sheets, we talked about uh, we talked about the selectors. So we're going to write the selector first. And for us now, the selector we want is the P tag. The P element. So we put the P, then inside curly braces, right? We now start by writing the property we want to change. And the property we want to change is the color property. And the value we want to give to the color property is the brown. Now, when we save this and open in our browser, as you can see, it has changed. We now have brown color for all our P. Uh, all our P elements, our paragraph elements. So you can see already how important it is for us to write style that can go general. So even if I remove this style that we have inside here, right? Or even if I remove the style we have inside here, like this, and save, you see that after it has refreshed, we still have the same color. That is because um, it is taking the color from the style that we're written up there. But supposing we want to change the color of this one to say green. By the time we save, you see the green is of higher order of preference than the brown because the, the green is inside the element itself. So it is higher in priority than the other brown that you see up here. So, but don't worry about that. We'll talk about um, the specificity much later in this course. So you begin to understand how to use your HTML together with the CSS. Now, 
we have looked at the second method by which we can add these things. So, but what if I have several pages and I want all the P tags in all these pages to all appear to be brown? If I begin to write, that means I may have to start copying this and pasting in all my um, individual pages, which will not make sense. That means if the company I'm working for, for instance, um, now says, oh, uh, Emmanuel, please, the, uh, the brown color, we are no more interested in it. Can you change it all to green? That means I have to start going to every page to change to this green color, which is not ideal. So, but if I have several pages and if there is a way I can, you know, just link all of them to one page so that when they say, oh, please we don't like the brown color, they want to change to the green. I'll just quickly go to that one line, just change it and it changes on all pages. And to do that, we use the external styling. Um, styling sorry. So for that, I'm gonna create, um, I'm gonna create a, a new folder here and I'll just call that folder CSS. Then inside the folder, we're going to create a CSS file. And we're going to call that file uh, style.css. Now, you can see that the icon we have on our CSS has changed. So showing us that this is now a CSS um, a file, not like the HTML file. Then let's get back to uh, our page here and let's link this file. So I'm going to uh, comment this out, comment that out, and just after the title here, I'm going to link using the link tag, right? Now, let's analyze this link tag. The link tag has this real attribute, which just tells this, um, tells this link that this stuff we just linked here is the style sheet. While the href here takes us to where the style sheet actually exists. So for us, the style sheet exists in a folder called CSS. And inside that folder, we have our style.css. So I'm going to save this. Obviously, we're not going to see any change here. But when we get back to our HTML, our style here, and we say the P selector should have the color of green, which our company has just told us to change the color of our, our paragraph to. So by the time I save this, as you can see, it all changes to green. But this is important because if I go to another page now, let's say in our paragraph.html, they say the paragraph two should be green. All I just need to do now is to add, uh, all I need to do here now is to add the link tag, right? So I'm not going to link to that page as CSS slash style. So when I save this and open the browser, you can see that the paragraph tag here is also greenish. So if the manager calls me back and says, ah, oh, I'm sorry, you, we have changed this thing to yellow. <laughs> Excuse me. Yellow or yellow green. We're now comfortable with yellow green, no more green. So you can see now that when I change this and save, automatically you can notice the yellow green change here. And even here too, you can see we have that yellow greenish color here. So this is how we add CSS to our page. Now, there are several ways, um, there are several selectors, many of them. So we have the basic selectors, as you can see here. The basic selectors are um, elements, like we have seen using the P elements. So all the elements are selectors. So we can have the P as a, as a selector, the H1 as a selector, the D as a selector, because they are all elements. Another basic selector we have is the class name. So a class is a kind of, a, 
A class is a kind of attribute that is used to classify items in our page. And we also have the ID name selector. So an ID is also a unique identifier uh, inside our element. So we're going to be looking at ID and class much later in our course. But there's also another special combination that we use for elements. So say for instance, uh, we we'll go back to, let me save this, I need to make any change. So but we we'll go back to uh, CSS basics. And here we're going to add, um, let's add some, let me create a div. So I'll give that div and inside the div, I want to have some uh, paragraph, ta uh, paragraph tags and inside it, I'll just put some dummy text. So I'll duplicate that, I have like two of them. Now, if I go back to my browser, you can see that the three paragraphs I just added down here, they're all having this green color. So what if because they are inside and uh, I want to create a kind of combination where since they are inside a particular div, I want them to have another color. So the way to do that is in my style sheet, I'll just do, I'm creating a kind of combination now. The combination is that any paragraph tag that is inside, right? Any paragraph tag that is inside a div should have the color of red. So when I save this, you see what has happened. That's because I'm now using a kind of combination between these two. Say, if this uh, div has paragraph, it should be red in color. Right. So that is how we use a uh, combinator. There are several other kinds of combinators the, that we're going to look at much later. We're we'll going to look at them, like the adjacent sibling, the general sibling, you know, direct sibling, direct child, and all those descendant things. So we'll be looking at them much later. So, but for now, these are the simplest possible ways. So I said we're going to look at um, the class, uh, the class and the ID. Now, uh, when we let's let me create a new file here, and I'll call that um, class dot um, Okay, so um, like call it HTML classes. Now, inside uh, HTML classes we need to look at what we can use the class to do. So for instance, we, we have a group of um, divs. So let me just say we have um, a, a group of divs. Let me just replicate them, thinking to four places. Now, div, let's say div one and div three have something in common. So because they have something in common, let me just say, this is div one, and on this other one, I'll say this is div two, and this is div three, and this is uh, div four. Oh, sorry, F O U R. Yep. So. These are the divs we have just uh, created. Now, as I was saying, div one probably has the same features as div two. So that means, for instance, we want the div one and two should be colored differently from div four and div two. So to do that, we just have to classify them. So we can say class of, um, Say, let's say class of um, which color do I use now? I'll call yellow. So I just call it EL to signify that they are class of yellow. So div three is also going to have a class of EL for yellow. Then I want the class here to be 
what other color do we have? I think um, purple. So I just call it pur. And same thing for this, I call it pur. So we're now going to style this. And we're going to style it. Let's just use the inline styling for this. Just say inline style. So we use the style elements. So between the style elements, we want to identify some divs and give them some styling. Oh, good night. So in this div here now, I'm going to use the syntax as you can see here. It says class name is going to, we're going to put a, a period sign or a dot before the class name if we want to use it as a selector in CSS. So for the year, I'll just copy this control C and here I'll first put the period, then paste. So that means whatever style I'm, I put into this yell is going to affect any class that has the name yell. Now, so I now give this a color of yellow, right? So when I save this and open with a browser, you see that these two divs here, they may not be too clear. Let me zoom it in a little bit. These two divs here automatically now carry the yellow color. So you can see how important the class is. I've been able to classify these two divs as one. That's why they can now carry the yellow color. So I can now style the other two divs with their own class, starting with the period, then the name of the uh, class. And the name of the class is per. And we said inside the curly braces, we're going to have the color, which is going to uh, give us the purple. So we have this purple color. And we we'll say, as you can see here, that we have purple color on these two divs. So we, uh, we can play around with these stuff so that we understand how these divs are. And you know, be able to do some fantastic things with them. Now, the other, um, the other type of selector we're going to look at quickly. I'll put a H1 here and say the ID selector. So the ID selector is a kind of um, special selector where it is used to represent a where the ID is um, that is um, like special identification. So the class, as you can see, I, I can repeat one class severally inside this project. In fact, let me even show you something interesting. I can have a H1 and I want the color of the H1. This is a H1, right? So I want the color of this H1 element to also be purple. All I just need to do is to add the pearl class. And by the time I save this, you see that my color, the color of my H1 uh, element is actually purple. I can decide to change that and use the yellow. So as you can see, they are all grouped the same. That is why you can have them like that. So another thing is we can have more than one class. So we can have several classes. Let's say I also want to do another class where I'm going to change the heading to some kind of um, capital letters, right? So, or I'm going to use that class to add line spacing. So all I just do here is, uh, let me take this back to purple so that we can have the color we can see. Then I'm just going to say LS, just the name of the tag. Any name you feel like giving your tag, please. That's uh, your, your class, that's what you give to it. You give your class any name. But make sure that your class names are um, at least a little descriptive. Like for me, LS stands for line spacing. So up here, I'm just going to create that class, class selector, sorry. Then inside it, I'll just do line uh, dash spacing. Sorry, let me confirm that that's line spacing. Oh, sorry, um, letter spacing, that's what I want to use, not line spacing. So letter spacing, oops. And 
we can just give it some maybe let's give it five pixels of space and when i save this and open the browser you can see the amount of space we now have between this element let me just increase it a little bit so you know that this space are not normal i just uh, so you can see the, the letter spacing between the, the space between each letter increasing so much as much as 15 pixels so now despite the fact that we have four here which makes our h1 to be this uh, purple color we also have the letter spacing which has spaced our uh, elements but you see it didn't affect any other elements that's because they did not contain the same class but if i want them to be spaced to Let's say in this first yellow here, I add the LS. And when I save this, you can see the amount of space we have up here. Let me remove that from this and put it on the color that is uh, a little brighter. So we can see when I add this LS, you can see the space between text that we have here. Now, back to the ID selector. So the ID selector is similar to the class selector. The only difference is that the ID selector can only be used once in a web page. So in my web page here now, I can only use an ID once. But something I forgot to mention when we started this class, HTML is a forgiving language. If you write it twice, it will not stop it from working. It will work, but it is not an ideal thing to do. So in as much as HTML is forgiving, we should always try as much as possible to follow the rules. Because um, at some point in time, those things will cause a lot of issues for your site, and you begin to debug and debug and debug. So we are going to create our first um, ID selector here. Say, for instance, we want to create a section. Let's say a section. I want to maybe section. Now, I want to give my section an ID. So let's say this ID this section is supposed to carry a blog. So I just say our ID is blog, right? Then inside our section, let's just say we're going to blog, have a, a blog articles. So let's just say um, our article is going to have, okay, let's, let's put it down in an article. So let us follow those uh, semantics article. And inside the article, we'll have probably like a heading, maybe H3. I say this is an article. Right, then we go to the next line. You know, an article will have like the heading and the main item. So let's just use a P tag and we use some dummy text here. So we'll do Lorem 20 and we have this like this, right? So as you can see here, we have our article. Now, to style our maybe our article section, let's say we have a title here. With a H2 that says my blog, my blog posts. Right? So when I save this, you can see we have that um, title here. Let me just differentiate these two sections using the HR. So you can see a line crossing to show that this is a new section that we've just um, created. Now, I can style my section using this blog. So if I go back to the top here, to style using the ID, you put the pound sign or the hash as we call it these days, and put the name of the ID you want to use. For our case here, the ID is blog. So then we'll open our curly braces. Within the curly braces, we now give the style. So we want to give a background color to our uh, project i want to give it some kind of uh let's give it this antique white and if we save this yeah so you can see we have this nice color now behind our blog post so everything that's do with our blog post so i can automatically see that id selector is not part of our blog post here yeah, okay that's fine let me just put another hr here just to, yep. So you can see our, our site is now looking a little more, uh, you know, beautiful than when we had 
no CSS, no, you know, nice coloration like we have right now, as you can see on this uh, page. So we have been able to use the class selector and the ID selector. This is how we use the ID selector using the, the first, the pound or the hash sign and the name of the ID. And for the class, we use the period or the dots sign followed by the name of the class. So that's how we use the class. Now, we can have a situation where, if you notice, we have P, we have P tags here, and we have our ID that, are, that belongs to this section. So I want to say the P tags in this section, I want to change the color. So something I can do is I can use the ID and say ID of blog, right? Then P. So I want to target all the P in a uh, uh, blog. So I want to give it um, a different color. So let me see the color of some kind of um, light, uh, gray. Yep. So it's going to be some kind of a light gray color. So when I save this, you can see that we have this light looking grayish color. Now, so far, you notice that we have used things like some properties. Uh, we have used colors, properties like color, we use property like um, letter spacing, properties like background, color, and there are several other properties. By the time you come to our cheat sheet here, you see we have been able to itemize some of them. So we can change the color of, um, we can change the color of our uh, text. So you can see this, this formatting is for text. So you can change color of the text. You can change the font of the text, the font family, the font size, the font width, the letter spacing, line height, um, text alignment. So we can, I think we have this text here. So let me just say, uh, I do text align for my blog to center. So we'll do text align center. So when I save this, you see that my texts are now centered. So they are, they are just there. Then you can indent, you can transform your text to you know different stuffs. Then we can also style our lists, like we saw in our previous class where we created um, some lists. So we can say we don't want, uh, want to change the type of uh, lists that, that are there. So we can also change backgrounds, like we saw here, where we use the, the background property to change the background here, the background property. So you can see example is background color. There are several other background properties that we can change, like the background attachment, background image, background position, and background repeats. Now, if you remember during uh, div and span class, I said the div occupies uh, the whole width on a page. So that is a, actually a display property. It, it displays on the whole width of our page. So for instance, if, you, if we look into this particular document we have here, you see that as I cannot increase the browser, the, the blog post occupies the whole width of that page. That to show that is a block level element. So these are some of the things you will see and be able to change using the display. So you can change the display property, you can float items left or right, and you can do um, the clear, you can do overflow, visibility. These are some properties that you can change in display. Then we can also change the cursor. So as you can see, my cursor is like try is like a, an arrow here. Sometimes when you hover over clickable text, you notice that your cursor changed to like a hand. So you can actually change this effect. Then the box, uh, the box that's the box. As you can see here, we have this um, box here showing us some some kind of things that we can do. So we can change the border property. Then here we have height, margin, padding, width. And some other things we can do also is position. Position, top, bottom, left, right, and the Z index. So I've just gone through all what we are going to be using in the coming days to begin to make some awesome things. And from tomorrow, 
from tomorrow, we will be working as if we are working for a company. Remember, we are preparing you to be able to at least gain, be gainfully employed with the skills you've learned from uh, CSS and uh, from our HTML and CSS class. So from tomorrow, we're going to be looking at work scenarios. Um, like the assignment I've just given, the assignment I've given today is an example of a work scenario. How we can use these work scenarios to say, oh, um, uh, you have been given social -so -so assignments. How do you, you know, go about it in your workplace? So uh, I want to thank you all for listening today and hope to see you tomorrow. So thank you all and have a wonderful night.